In the divergent world, once you leave the nest, there is no going back. We're talking intense boot camps with Muay Thai fighters, 66 foot free falls, and a zip line that runs through all of downtown Chicago. You have to decide if you're gonna stick with the way you were raised or listen to your own internal compass. We're gonna be diving out of that nest and going deep into the complex world of Divergent. Number one, what good would an action movie be without a badass seven story jump into oblivion? Alicia Vela Bailey, who doubles for Shailene Woodley, hasn't done a lot of high falls in her stunt career. So in preparation for her jump, they started her at 40 feet to 50, all the way up to her final 66 foot jump. That airbag looks like a little cell phone down below when you're jumping off the building. Number two. To prepare for their roles, the Divergent cast had to endure a grueling three week long boot camp in Chicago. The director, Neil Berger, wanted to make sure they had the military side of their performance down packed. It was a painful process for the actors, as they were trained by army veterans and professional Muay Thai fighters. Among all the intense physical training, Shailene also had to be trained in firearms and knife throwing. Number 3. Obviously, you have to get in a few practice rounds before jumping onto a moving train, right? Well, unfortunately, Shailene was the only cast member that didn't get a chance to rehearse before attempting the jump. The train, which was built completely by the special effects team, is pulled by an endless. So essentially, if she missed the first jump, they could bring it right back around. Number 4. One thing you probably didn't know was that Shailene Woodley's butt did not make the final cut. Theo James, who plays 4, decided the best way to make light of he and Shailene's romantic scene was to pull down her pants right in the middle of filming. I pulled Shay's pants down on the first wheel, but you actually took it very well. She said it completely threw her off, though luckily not the Ferris wheel. Number 5. Shailene Woodley gets the ride of her life through downtown Chicago on a zip line traveling at 30 miles per hour. She actually describes herself as not afraid of heights, but afraid of falling. So this was a great opportunity for her to face her fears. I get such an adrenaline rush from completing something that I didn't think I could complete. Do you think you'd be brave enough to fly through all of downtown Chicago on a zip line? Let us know in the comments. Number six. Speaking of bravery, do you remember the scene where Triss and Four walked on a flimsy high wire between two skyscrapers? Yeah, that was made by computers. So it has to be computer generated from scratch, but it has to look exactly like you took a photograph of those buildings. With LiDAR scanning and extensive texture photography, they were able to create an exact replica of the two skyscrapers and make it look like Triss and Four were really 1,000 feet in the air. Number 7. Neil Berger wanted a unique fighting style portrayed in the film that no one had ever seen before. What they ended up coming up with was a peekaboo fighting guard, as well as a signature hammer fist. The fight choreographer, JJ Perry, wanted the actor's progression to be shown on camera. In the first training scene where Triss fights Molly, that is their actual first day of training. He wanted it to be clear how far everyone progressed by the end of the film. Number 8. Neil Berger had been a fan of Shailene Woodley ever since he saw her in The Descendants. When he was thinking about Triss's qualities, he naturally landed on Shailene to play her. But she had this incredible combination of vulnerability and rebelliousness. But because Shailene was such a powerful force, they struggled to find someone to play her counterpart for. We read a number of people and they were really good actors, but sometimes they just didn't fit with her or sometimes she kind of would roll right over them. They really went through the ringer trying to find someone who could keep up with Shailene. That is until Theo James walked in. So they had this incredible reading together and we knew right away that he was the guy. Number nine. The pit, one of the most important and utilized set pieces in the entire film, was built from the ground up by the art department and set design. The idea originated after seeing pictures of a quarry in Colorado. Because the entire pit was handmade, they really had to focus on getting a textural finish that looked realistic on camera. Painters and plasters have to achieve a textural
section finish that works really well from close up and really well from a long way away. Though most of the pit was constructed of plaster, the fight coordinators had to strategically place foam pads onto the walls where the fights took place, so no one would actually get hurt being bashed into them. Do you think you'd be able to go back and spot them? Number 10. The birth of one of the five factions came from Neil Berger's visit to Willis Tower, at the time known as Sears Tower. I looked down just to the south of it and I saw this patch of green and I said that's where abnegation should be. Immediately after, they started building faction houses right in the middle of Chicago. They were so beautifully done, residents of the city were actually wondering if they could buy them. Number 11. Veronica Roth, the author of the Divergent series, got to make a cameo in the film as a Dauntless Initiate. Because this was her first time in front of the camera, she had a few on-screen jitters. She was super nervous because she really can't act. I didn't want to mess it up. I didn't want to be like the one weak link in the chain. Well, don't worry, Veronica. There was not a single weak link in this film. Great job. Number 12. Everything in the Divergent world has meaning behind it, even the characters' tattoos. After they were designed, they were printed on plexiglass before being presented to the actors. Ford's iconic back tattoo spoke to Theo because of its aggressiveness and sense of meaning. It's so aggressive that it takes several hours just to apply. Number 13. As we all know, Divergent is full of beautiful, compelling visual effects. But what you may not know is how much they had to work around the city of Chicago itself. They had to get rid of things that seem minute, like cars, traffic lights, and pedestrians, in order to create a setting that looks different and futuristic, but not so futuristic that it's unbelievable. Which brings us to our next topic. Number 14. Because Divergent is set in a dystopian, futuristic world, they couldn't just shoot on the streets of Chicago and call it a day. They had to transform and repurpose every inch of the city, while still trying to maintain its authenticity. We were using the locations that were there and then transforming them. Neil Berger describes the redecorating of Chicago's streets as an, an enormous undertaking. Who knew something as simple as a streetlight could bring us back to 2014? Number 15. As I'm sure you can imagine, there were quite a few on-set injuries in the making of Divergent. One in particular you might not be aware of was the vicious attack on Zoe Kravitz by Shailene's trailer door. She made it out alive, but she did have to get 8 stitches across her nose. Not only that, but according to Zoe, Shailene got to take home a battle scar of her own. Shay at one point fell doing a stunt on her own and she cut her face. So there we have it. All the blood, sweat, tears, and movie magic involved in the making of Divergent. Veronica Roth's beautiful trilogy was brought to life by a dedicated cast, crew, and of course, the city of Chicago. What was your favorite behind the scenes moment?